Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be part two of our slavery series. Now we're going to pick up where we left off in part one. Now we ended with the introduction to the transatlantic slave trade and American slavery. And today we're going to be picking up there after we go back just a little first. Now we're going to go back a little because the transatlantic slave trade was actually the second stage of the three stages of the triangular trade. Now many of us know the transatlantic slave trade as the Middle Passage. Now since we left off in the middle, of course we have to dial back to the beginning just to tell it. So... With that being said, let's chat. Now to pick up from part one, Portugal was the first nation to participate in trading in slave Africans during the mid 15th century. Now the Portuguese, they built relationships with the indigenous nations along the African coast and they pretty much dominated the African slave trade in the earlier years. Now, Portugal pretty much helped lay the foundation for the triangular trade, which became a very complex trading system between Europe, Africa, and the 13 colonies. Now, the triangular trade, it developed around the 16th century, or in other words, around the 1500s. Now, initially, Europe, Africa, and the colonies, they traded goods and treasures. And it was not until around the 1600s when things changed drastically. Now, before the 1600s, according to some reports, Africans had been within the Americas since around about 1490. Now, the reports state that the Africans, they were brought to the Americas by Christopher Columbus during the time of his expeditions to the island of Hispaniola which is now known as Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Now, the Africans, they worked as indentured servants, which at this time was pretty much a more mild form of slavery. So they were basically believed to have been slaves. I mean, but they weren't subject to the harsher punishments as the slaves to come in the future. And they were believed to be slaves and not free men, Pretty much because their timeline and their history fits right into the timeline of the origin of slavery. Now, these Africans, they were said to have helped with establishing the new colonies and survival within the Americas and the New World. And a little side note and interesting fact I would like to fill you all in on. Now, in some reports... Estevanico, he is said to have been the first enslaved African in North America. Now, Estevanico, he was a black North African interpreter who assisted in Spain's exploration of the Americas. But let's keep on moving back to the story. Now, in May of 1619, about 350 Africans were abducted from the Indogo region of Angola and loaded onto the San Juan Bautista. Well, the San Juan Bautista, excuse me. And it's also known as the Sajo Bautista. Now, the ship, it was on its way to Veracruz along the coast of Mexico. Now, before the slaves made it to the ship, they had to march hundreds of miles at times. And their voyages could take days, weeks, or months, depending on the conditions. They were barefooted, barely clothed, shackled together, beaten, and assaulted, all while marching to a much worse fate. Now, the slaves' voyage, it was so heinous and inhumane, many people find it hard to believe what they endured to this very day. Now, once the slaves were aboard the ship, they remained shackled and they were chained together. And they were forced to lie in the filth of the ship, in their own vomit, urine, feces, blood, and other bodily fluids as well as their neighbor's fluids, 
all while being starved, beaten, and assaulted. And the closest they got to a bath was water being dashed on them here and there when they were given a little water to drink. So, of course, disease ran rampant in these conditions and many lives were lost. So the sick or the ill slaves, they were simply just tossed aboard and discarded. Now, outside of disease, many lives were lost to assault, whether it be sexual or physical. And the total number of lives lost total around 150 according to the reports and once the ship arrived near its destination it was invaded by two english ships the white lion and the treasurer in the gulf of mexico now the crews aboard the white lion and the treasurer they were pretty much what we would describe as pirates so they invaded the san juan batista looking for gold and goods and they were surprised to find an even greater treasure. Slaves. 50 to 60 slaves were taken from the Bautista and boarded upon the White Lion and the treasurer. Now, both Captain John Jope, the captain of the White Lion, and Captain Daniel Elfrith, the captain of the treasurer, they both set sail to Virginia. Now, the White Lion, it arrived at Point Comfort in late August of 1619. So it arrived first and the treasurer, it arrived about three or four days later. Now, Port Comfort today, it's known as Fort Monroe. And after the White Lion, it anchored 20 to 30 slaves were marched off the ship. Then there were several onlookers at the docks when these slaves was marched off the ships. And amongst those onlookers was Mr. John Roth. I mean, John Roth, he was a Virginia colonist and he was also the husband of the famous Pocahontas. It was not John Smith, but that's another video. But John Roth, he documented the entire event. But and little did he know that this would be the historically documented beginning of American slavery. Now, Rolf's journal entry has been immortalized in textbooks, and this makes 1619 a reference point for slavery. But it's still far too complicated to say that this is the exact time that American slavery began. I mean, no single date can be narrowed down according to to the reports and in 1619 when the slaves arrived in Virginia slavery had not yet been defined by law in what would become later the United States however the Africans who arrived at Port Comfort in 1619 they were forced into servitude and this servitude pretty much fits the description of enslaved people which is defined by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So the Africans who exited those ships, they were sold as indentured servants since slavery was undefined at this time. So the Africans, they pretty much agreed or they were forced if they did not agree to work for no pay for only a set amount of time according to their contracts. Now, the Africans were supposed to be free at the end of their contract. But of course, we know that this did not happen. I mean, the labor demands were rising and workers were needed. Now, many Europeans who arrived in, the America, in America, they also arrived under the same contract. But unlike the Africans, their contract was actually honored. Now, Antonio and Isabella, two of the Africans who arrived at Point Comfort, by the way of the White Lion, they became servants of Captain William Tucker, and he was the commander of Point Comfort. Now, Antonio and Isabella, they had a son whom they named William as well. And their son, William, he is known as the first African child to have been born in America. And now, according to the law at that time, 
William, their son, he was born a free man. But we all know that they did not honor this as well with all the other African contracts. And we don't even have to guess that more defined laws were put into place as time passed. Now, the quote unquote servants and workers, they were forced to continue working for free after their contracts ended, whether they wanted to or not. And as less and less indentured servants arrived from England, more and more excuses were made to not honor the African contracts. And soon, a racial caste system was developed and African servants were being held as servants or slaves for life. And in 1662... A Virginia court ruled that all children born to enslaved mothers were the property of their mother's owner. And as the cash crops such as sugar, tobacco, and cotton began to rise, so did slavery. Slavery became a booming and lucrative business. So the triangle of trade, it became no longer about trading goods and treasures. I mean, don't get me wrong. They still traded these things, but it mainly became about trading slaves, which leads us to the second stage of the triangular trade. And this is the Middle Passage. Now, the Middle Passage, it was the fourth voyage of enslaved Africans across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World. So it was pretty much a leg of the triangular trade. So to break that down for you, the goods such as cotton cloth, brass dishes, knives, tools, guns, and ammunition, they were first transported from Europe to Africa to trade for the slaves. Then once they got there, the African warlords and African kings, they traded their people for those goods. And yes, you heard me correctly. Not all Africans were stolen or kidnapped from Africa and forced into slavery. I mean, many were sold by their own people. And I stated this in part one of the series. It was a very lucrative business and everybody wanted in on it, even the Africans. And once the Africans were obtained from Africa, they were forced to work as slaves. You know, they went on the Middle Passage, went through this horrible voyage, and they were forced to work as slaves in the Americas and the West Indies, in the fields, the mines, and on the plantations. And then, once those goods were produced on the plantations and all that stuff was produced, those products, as a result of all of that free African labor, those goods, such as sugar, rice, tobacco, cotton, rum, and indigo, they were all transported back to Europe. Now, the product demands, of course, as time passed, they grew and they grew and they grew and they grew so much more and more Africans were being shipped. I mean, anywhere from 150 to 600 men, women and children were stuffed in the holes of ships like cargo. I mean, it's horrific and unimaginable what they faced on the months long journeys across the waters while they awaited to be forced into slave labor. I mean, they weren't waiting on anything good. And what they experienced once they got to their destinations in these plantations is unbelievable. I mean, it's so unbelievable. We're going to save it for part three, which is going to be about the plantations. And well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. Tell me what you think. I mean, what are your thoughts on how the African people were treated? What are your thoughts about the Africans selling their own people into slavery? I mean, please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, pretty, pretty, please. We're on our way to our thousand subscribers. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.